Sometimes winning doesn't look like winning. Sometimes a win looks an awful lot like loss, looks an awful lot like death. How many times have you been knocked down? Tempted to doubt when things don't go the way we think they should. You could imagine the disciples' confusion. When Jesus, their king, their champion, he, he was nailed to a cross and died. He seemingly lost, and they didn't know what to do. What you and I often miss, and, and what the disciples didn't see was, was that this was all a part of the plan. Jesus said, no one takes my life, I lay it down. What looked like the greatest loss in history was in fact a, a paradigm shifting victory. Jesus rose from the grave and death couldn't touch him. Sin had lost its power and he was crowned the champion of all champions, undefeated. The same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in us, which means his victory over sin is your victory over sin. Your victory over addiction and shame. That thing that you thought was dead in your life, he stands ready to breathe new life. His win is now your win. And this victory reverberates through the centuries, declaring forevermore that he is our champion and he is alive.
sleep. I said, God is not dead this morning. Anybody grateful for his sacrifice? Anybody glad for the blood that was shed for the remission of your sins? Hallelujah. He thought we was worth it. He thought we was worth it. He hung on that cross because he thought of you. He knew exactly where you would be today and he died for that's why he died for me. 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 But he didn't. He didn't say that. He got up with all power in his hands, power to walk right, power to talk right, power to live right. Hallelujah! Right here. Listen. You thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life. Come on. So I could be free. So I
was worth keeping. Yes, he did. So you claimed me up inside. You thought I was to die for. That I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life so I could be free. Just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. I'm say it one more time. I am free. Anybody glad you're free this morning? Praise the Lord. I'm free. I'm no longer bound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Listen, you got to be bound by something to be appreciated that you're free this morning. I'm no longer bound by the guilt of my shame of my past, depression, suicidal thoughts. I'm no longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is arresting. It's just a blessing. Pray. Praise the Lord. Oh, oh, hallelujah. 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 I'm free. Somebody ought to bless the name of Jesus. Somebody ought to bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning and praise the Lord. Welcome to Resurrection Sunday here at Greater Emmanuel Temple. I want everybody that can stand. I want you to stand if you can. If you can, to those watching online, I want to say happy Resurrection Sunday to you. Thank you for joining with us today. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will do what? We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. The Lord is so good. The Lord is so good. And I'm so glad to see you all today. You all look so wonderful. Y'all look so wonderful. Everybody in here looks so wonderful. Oh, y'all don't seem too excited about it. I want to do something different real quick. I want you to find somebody that you can greet, and I want you to take a moment and just testify to them. Tell them something good God has done for you in the last four months. Amen. If there's anybody, find somebody. Somebody next to you, somebody you know, somebody you don't know, somebody you came with. You can talk right to them. This is a quick testimony service.
Amen. Did anybody hear something worth, amen, giving God praise? Did anybody hear something worth, amen, being inspired, amen? It is the testimonies of the saints, amen, that encourage us and keep us going. I'm glad you're here, amen. I'm glad you're here. I want to go before the Lord in prayer. While there are a lot of things going on in our world, a lot of things going on in our lives, I always announce the common denominator of the solution. There is only one solution, and that is Jesus Christ, who is the answer for this world today. Amen. And the reason why you're here today is because uh, you have had some type of encounter with Jesus Christ or you've heard about Jesus Christ or you've been filled with the Holy Spirit and you're excited about it, you've been baptized in his name, and you know that because of this moment of celebration, amen, it is worth coming to church. Amen. It is worth coming to church, and I'm so grateful that you are here, even all of our guests that are here today. I want to just pray over this house and everyone that is listening and watching us online today. Amen. Look to somebody and just tell them, I'm praying for you. Man, and listen, I'm praying for all of y'all. I hope y'all are praying for me because I need it. I know many of y'all are praying for me, and I'm so glad. I'm praying for all of y'all. praying for y'all. I hope y'all are praying for me. I love y'all. Amen. If you would just bow your heads and consider this time, the space, this moment that you have right now. We understand that some people did not wake up this morning, people had plans to be somewhere today, and life made a turn. It's a fact all over the world, but God gave you another opportunity just to be here in life, in church or out of church. You're alive, and it's worth giving God praise. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this time and this moment, Father. I thank you for being who you are to us. I praise you for allowing us to recognize your resurrection. I praise you because it is not a myth, it is not a story, but it is something that actually happened. And I give you praise for it right now. Father, as we're here and as we've gathered in this place or online or wherever we are listening to this sermon, Father, my prayer is today, by your resurrection power, you will encourage someone, you will lift someone, you will allow someone to experience the release from depression, from anxiety, from heartbreak, in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs to be healed today. Somebody came to church today with a smile on their face. But inside they are broken. Someone is listening right now. And inside they are broken. Father, but today I ask you to be the mender of all broken hearts. For those that have faith in you, Father. Those that are pleading for you, Father. This is no ritual. But this is something that we believe because you're a great God. And there are many testimonies in this house, God, of individuals that can say, if it had not been for you, we don't know where we would be. But, Father, we bless you for this time and this moment to be in the house or even gathering online to worship. I pray, Father, that you remember those that are in the hospitals, those that are home sick who could not get up and come to church today. Father, I pray that they will have a visitation of the Spirit today the, to, to know that you are real, to acknowledge that you are real in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, that you will forgive us of anything we've said or done that is not like you. I pray that you will create in each of us a clean heart, that we may be better, Father. Renew within us a right spirit, amen, so that we'll be tolerable in the name of Jesus. We'll be able to show people who you are in the name of Jesus. Father, my prayer most importantly today is that somebody will commit their life to you or recommit their life to you, Jesus, because you've done so much for us. We cannot tell it all, 
We could be here all day speaking of your wonderful works, Father, but you've been just that good to every individual in here. Many of us have recovered, amen, from pain, have recovered from trauma, Father, are recovering right now, and we give you praise for the process, dear God. And so, Father, I just thank you for this time and place. As people all over the world are honoring and remembering your resurrection, God, we give you praise for what you've done, and we thank you, God. Bless this church. Bless this city, bless this country, bless our world, Father. Lead us and guide us as we prepare for your return, Father. In the name of Jesus, we love you because you first loved us, Father. Help us to love one another in the way that we should. God, we need you right now. This world needs you. Help us to be the light in the midst of darkness. Help us to be the salt of the earth that you called us to be. And, Father, we will give your name praise and glory in Jesus' name. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. We pray amen. You may put your hands together as you get ready to go to your seats. Amen. I'm so grateful for you all that are here. Y'all really, really look good today. Y'all really, really look good today. Amen. And so I'm excited that you're here. Amen. I'm glad that you're here at church today. Do we have any first-time visitors? Just wave your hand if it's your first time. First time. So glad to have you all today. So glad to have you all today. Amen. I know you all could have chosen anywhere to be, but I'm glad you're here with us at Great Emmanuel Temple. I want to take a moment and shout out uh, our team of deacons here at Great Emmanuel Temple who provided us with a wonderful breakfast experience. Come on, y'all could do better than that. The eggs, the bacon, the sausage, the pancakes, all of it. And everyone that served and all of those that helped, we're just so grateful for you. Amen. God is good. He is amazing. I want to say this before I get into the, the sermon. We're going to let you go. I know some of y'all have brunch reservations, and y'all have plans with your families, and I'm all about celebrating family. Amen. So that's what we're going to do today, but there is a word from the Lord, and I want to just share it with you. This Wednesday, I want to make mention of a special Champions Club for those that have not joined us on the first and third Wednesday of the month online via our Facebook and our YouTube. We uh, have our Champions Club at 7 p.m., which is a uh, renewed model of Bible study here for us at our church. I'm excited because this Wednesday, I'm sitting down talking to one of my good friends and one of the premier pastors, not only in this city, uh, not only across denominational lines, but my friend, Pastor Albert Tate, uh, how he wrote uh, a number one seller already that's been released called How We Love Matters. And it's a book on racial reconciliation and how we as believers, amen, should handle and tackle the racial issues and concerns that we have via spiritual guidance. And so join us this Wednesday for a special time, a great time, this conversation. Also, next Sunday after church, next Sunday after church, uh, I will have a, a brief 30-minute meeting or so, or less rather, with those who are interested in the Lifeline group here at Greater Emmanuel Temple. Uh, we have a, a ministry that will uh, provide services and care for those that are incarcerated as well as those who are recently released from incarceration. And one thing that I'm excited to let you all know that if any of you, many of us have friends or loved ones who uh, are incarcerated right now. Does anybody have a friend or loved one that you know that's incarcerated? Raise your hand right now. So if we look around the room, there are individuals uh, that are incarcerated uh, that we know and we want to be able to extend love uh, from the outside as we reach to uh, provide this in-care ministry. I'm excited about the name Lifeline Group because uh, it was birthed uh, and borrowed from us uh, as it was birthed by uh, a late great friend of this church, Pastor David Hernandez, the father of Isaac and Pete Hernandez. From Family Life Center, and so we are continuing uh, the legacy and reaching out and being able to help. So, if there's individuals that you know that are incarcerated, uh, soon we will have information for you, a space for you to give us their information so that we can reach out and be a blessing. Uh, because even the Bible gives instructions how we should care and remember to visit those that are in prison. It is scripture, and so we want to follow the principles of God. So that meeting is going to happen on next Sunday. And then I want all leaders 
every leader in this church and your staff and your team, I want you to be prepared to join us uh, on Saturday, April 30th for a special leaders meeting at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. That's two weeks from yesterday. That's 13 days from now. I want to see you at 10 a.m. on time. We'll be in the fellowship hall uh, preparing and setting uh, the, the tone for the rest of the year. Amen. So that's what's going on now. Are y'all ready for the word of the Lord? Y'all pray for me this morning. I'm excited as somebody who cared enough about me. Uh, I love the children of this church, the young people of this church. who are, They're going to have an Easter egg hunt right after church here in the courtyard. And also, those of you that got dressed up or didn't get dressed up, whatever you, uh, however you came, we have a space for you to take pictures in the courtyard. We got the little spinning camera thing. I don't even know what y'all call it. But I want everybody to get out, out there and take some pictures and do whatever it is you're going to do. Uh, but I'm happy because of our youth. We have amazing young people. And Elle, the daughter of our pastor, she gave me, she said, here, pastor, I got something for you. She handed me a flower. She picked me a fresh flower just right now outside and said, said here, pastor, this is for you. I said, you know what? I would wear it. I can't wear it, but I'm taking it with me. So I'm so glad, amen, that the young people here at this church are amazing. Now, let's go to the word of the Lord. I want to turn to a passage in the Bible that's familiar. There are many accounts of Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection, and many different angles in which it is spoken on. And today I want to visit Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. And the Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. This morning, I want to use for a topic, rude awakenings. Rude awakenings. The past few weeks, in my sermon presentation, I really tried to deal with human difficulties because we all have them. Even some of us here are dressed up, looking good, got our hair did, put on your best cologne or perfume. But it is a fact that we're dealing with our own individual issues and difficulties. And so I've been trying to offer a spiritual Christ-centered solution to the issues that we have. Because we all have them. I don't care what your social media profile says. Maybe we should put an asterisk and say, but still with issues. I don't care how good we present ourselves. How good we look for the camera. We should be able to say in parentheses, still with issues. Because we all have issues. In this life that you and I live, we experience the good and the bad. We experience the, the peaks and the valleys. But it's also evident to me that we live in what is known as a behavioral repetitive society. What is that, you may ask? This is when we deal with these difficulties and they're revealed through a complex range of behaviors and factors. And I want to just mention four of the factors. One of the factors in which things are revealed is, the first one is, situations. 
we all have types of situations, which is a set of circumstances. Maybe you didn't have your father in your life. That's a situation. Maybe you were born in a state of poverty. That's a situation. Maybe you were born with a disease. You didn't ask for it. But it is a situation. Along with the factor of situations, the next thing that we deal with, the next factor, is context. That is, the circumstances that form the setting in which we can take a look at it and accurately assess what we've gone through. We can actu actually and accurately properly understand what we're going through. You know, there's people that think they understand you, but they don't have the cognitive place or position according to their thinking to really assess what you've gone through. So they can tell you all about what you're going through but never experienced it and don't know what the heck they are talking about. There are many people tell me about things in my life. I have people that tell me about being, the, being a pastor and how I should deal with individuals. And I say, really? How long have you been pastor? Uh, I've never been pastoring, but I know I've been in church long enough. I'm here to tell you, until you sit in this seat, you may not know what the heck you're talking about. You got to be able to talk to somebody that can give you real context on the situation. Nobody can speak on what it's like living without a father if you have not lived without a father. Nobody can speak what it's like in being born in poverty if you have not been born in poverty. So we have to understand and have grace as we try to speak on the context of individuals. But what we should accurately be able to do is look at ourselves and be able to grab the context of our own life and what we are going through or have gone through. The third factor that allows us to look at our behaviors is the culture, the arts, and all of the uh, other manifestations of human intellectual achievements, all of these things, the culture. We get together and create some amazing things, but we also create some horrible things in the culture. Well, we wonder why certain things look the way they do in this time. Some of it may be because of the culture. Maybe it's some of the movies we watch. Maybe it's some of the music we listen to. Maybe it's the media that we're so in, uh, engrossed in. All of these things, the culture, they cause us to act certain ways. Because they do it, we feel we can do it. Because Cardi does it, or Ghana does it, we feel we should do it. That's the culture. And the culture is not just relegated to things outside of the church. Just because somebody else in the church does something, we feel we got to do it because they do it. And then we're even influenced sometimes wrongly inside of the church. I ain't got time to go down that road to talk about all the things that we may have done wrong in the church, repetitively doing things because we saw somebody else do it. But it is a, uh, one of the causes of our behavior. And the last thing I want to bring out today is our own personality traits. Everybody in here has some type of personality. And some people's personality likes to show itself off. Likes to open up his mouth and talk when it's not, amen, called for talking. Likes to prance around and be seen when there is no call for you to be seen. It is a combination of your character and the qualities of the actions in which you choose to walk in. But see, we all have come up with all these little habits. Everybody, everybody in here 
has a habit. Everybody has a way of doing things that brings you, yourself comfort. Amen. It makes us all unique. And we have our very own perspectives that cause us to look at individuals. Amen. The way we look at them, but we don't even know how to accurately look at ourselves. Amen. And we have all these ways in which we make and break relationships. Amen. Some people show up. You connect with people. You just thought they was good. You thought this was the friend you were longing for. And then after a while, you see, who are they? What are they showing up to? Maybe they are after you because of your money. Maybe they're after you because of your status. Maybe they're after you because of your access. But there are individuals that go through all these things, and we discover all of these habits. But I'm telling you, it's safe to say that our individual desire at the end of the day is to be able to wake up every day and say, I'm good. We all want to say, I'm good. We all want to say with confidence, I'm good, no matter of this circumstance, no matter of the culture. We want to say, I'm good. But some people, let me tell you, some people say this in truth while many lie to themselves. A lot of people say, I'm good, when you're really not good. Maybe you're saying, I'm good, because you don't really want to deal with the issues in your life. Maybe you're saying, I'm good, amen, and you know your finances are jacked up. Your financial management is on the lowest level that it could ever be. Maybe your relational, amen, processes are, are, are not even useful. You say, I'm good. You think you're good, but you're wondering why you ain't got nobody. The reality, the reality, let me teach this morning, if you will, let me hear the reality is that many of us are walking and living in a state of confusion, a state of chaos, and a state of crisis. That's right. It's one thing to be out of the will of God. But I was thinking about it last night. It's another thing to be out of your own will. When everything you're trying to do ain't working. And you have all these desires and you, 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 you complain and as you sit back and look, you've done all this stuff and you still ain't where you want to be. You've done all this stuff and you can see that you're not on the right road, amen, to the place that you're trying to go. But the worst position to be in is living in a state of confusion, chaos, and crisis. Confusion, let's talk about it. For those that are here that are psychologists, let's talk about it. That, that the mental status in which a person is not able to think with the correct level of clarity. Can't think right. You, 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 there's a reason, amen, something happened and you, you don't even know how to respond because you can't think right. Uh, things happen in your relationship and you don't even know how to respond because you, you, you just can't think right. Amen. You've been presented with an opportunity and you don't know how to respond because you just can't think right. In a state of confusion. And then next there's chaos, and that's when confusion goes to another level. Hey Amen. You think you're doing right, but you are wrong, and everybody and everybody around you can see that you're wrong, but you just can't seem to see it. That's when I believe you're in a state of chaos. And then there's crisis, and that's when you're dealing with the intense difficulty, the trouble, and even the danger. Some of us here right now, some of us listening right now are at a dangerous point in life. We may look good. But we're at a dangerous point in our life. We're dealing with somebody that we shouldn't be dealing with. Dealing with something that we should not even be dealing with is dangerous. And you know we're living in a dangerous society when good is evil spoken of and evil, amen, is defined as good. Dangerous position, dangerous position. And I want to tell you what it is, amen. At the end of the day, Apostle Paul in the Bible, he identifies this situation and he calls it, amen, uh, and identifies it as being dead in our trespasses. Talks about being dead in our trespasses, dead in our sin. And sin has caused confusion. Sin has caused chaos. Sin has caused and called us to a place of crisis. And Paul describes the state of our hearts, the state of ourselves apart from God. Us being unaware of God's grace that's right next to us. Us being untapped into the mercy that's right next to us. Amen. And all these things describe a fallen world. And it's not a pretty picture. Everything that glitters and glamours 
and has spotlights and has filters and has all these things, amen, it does not always present the pretty picture. Let's look at the heart of the whole matter. And the matter is that the devil is busy. The enemy does not want to see you thrive. The enemy does not want to see you saved. The enemy does not want to see you commit your life to Jesus Christ. This is what's happening while the glitz and the glamour is popping. The enemy is saying, I think I got him now. I think I got him distracted. I got him distracted. There's a mission of this world, amen, uh, that I must do. I, mean, I know why Jesus came, but I got a work to do. That's right. The enemy has a work to do. And he has many of us distracted. Paul describes this picture. And what he's saying, he's not really saying it to depress, cause us to be depressed, but he wants us to, 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 to really accept the honest truth. And we may smile, we may look at things, but the state of homelessness, the state of drug addiction, it is a matter of evil in this world. Because how can people sit and have billions of dollars, billions of dollars, and individuals still be hungry? That's a hard issue that we have here in this world. So he calls us as individuals, us as mankind, dead in our trespasses. The term dead means to no longer be alive. Somebody's dead, they're no longer alive. But I got a news flash for you. Death does not only come by murder. It does not only come by disease. It does not only come... By age, death can be considered no longer functioning. Maybe you're here and you're no longer functioning. Amen. Uh, especially by a fault or something that may have happened in your time. Maybe it's a lack of activity. Amen. A lack of excitement. There are individuals that show up to work every day. Dead. There are individuals with all the potential in the world. Dead. There's individuals that's trying to date somebody. Show up to the date. Dead. There's people that come to church. Dead. People around you excited about God. Heard a testimony. Amen. I watched the responses of the testimonies today to see how you reacted. Man, uh, that's good. Dead. We used to be excited hearing about the goodness of Jesus Christ. But dead, worship for an almighty God going forth, people waving their hands, people crying, and you sitting there, dead. Come to find out that some people are not only suffering silently, but some people are suffering openly. But I'm glad you're here today because I want to tell you about an answer. While modern society is looking for an answer, I'm inclined to uh, one of the writers in the book of Psalm 119, verse 116, uh, 169, excuse me, I believe it might have been Ezra who wrote this. That's what they say. He said, give me understanding according to your word. I don't want understanding outside of the world because if I get understanding outside of the word, I mean, of God, I'm tapping into the world's way of doing things. I'm in it, but I'm not of it. So give me understanding according to your word. And according to the word, <laughs> there is an answer. Look to somebody and say, there is an answer. Man, uh, look to somebody else that may get excited. Say, there is an answer. The book of Colossians. I got to read this. Hey, Amen. As I was thinking about it, it hit me. Verse cha chapter 1, verse 15, he said, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. And for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. I'm talking about the answer. And he is before all things. And in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. And he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in 
in heaven making peace by the blood of the cross. I'm talking about the answer. I'm not talking about AI. He is a type of answer, but he's not the answer. Jesus Christ is the answer. He said, making peace by the blood of the cross. Let me tell you something, saints. Uh, I, I'm here. I'm excited because, we, we, you know, this is the fifth year we've celebrated Easter in our renovated building. Amen. And I, I'm going to tell you, when I walked around this place, I, 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 I by myself looked at things and said, what do we need to get rid of and what do we need to keep? And I said it by myself, Lord, and I want you to show me what to get rid of and what to keep. And while this world is going completely digital, amen, I, I felt it was, need, uh, it was needful to keep the library at this church. And I went downstairs in the library. And I said, Lord, give me something. And I found a book penned by a gentleman named M.R. DeHaan. And he wrote this book in 1943, and I opened it up and it said, to, this belongs to Dr. Carl W. Stewart. And the book is called The Chemistry of the Blood. And so in this book, uh, he deals with physiology and he explains how the human body is made up of many different kinds of tissue. It's made of muscle. Yeah, your body is made of muscle even though you may not have seen it in a long time. Your body and my body is made of some type of muscle. It's also made of fat. It's also made of nerves and glands and bone and all types of collective issue. And all these tissues have one, one thing in common. They're fixed cells with specific functions. But there's one thing in the body, unlike these fixed tissues, the blood of Jesus is made totally different. It's really fluid and mobile, and it's not limited to one particular tissue. It can flow throughout the whole body. And that's why, why when we come up with the term metabolism, when you're, uh, you, you, the blood is carrying away the waste. It's traveling through your body. It's carrying away the, the waste, the things that you ate that maybe you shouldn't have eaten. Amen. The blood is carrying things away as it moves. It grabs the ashes of those various things in your body that should not be in there. And he goes on to say that the blood is the most mysterious of all tissues whose function is not really still to this day yet fully understood. He goes on to say, amen, that, that, that all of the things that the blood is to the body, amen, it's many things. And we look at it and we see this red, amen, liquid that comes out of our body. But he says it's the life that's in the blood. And see, some things, amen, we look at and we think it's just regular, amen. And he calls the Bible, he calls the Bible a bloody book calls the Bible a, a book of blood, amen, and as I sat there for a moment, I didn't even get to page five of the book, that was all I needed to read, amen, I began to think of songs, I used to wonder why mom used to say, the blood of Jesus, I used to wonder why old mothers and deacons and trustees in the church would say, the blood of Jesus, amen, and I used to, amen, at communion here when we would sing songs, oh, the blood of Jesus, that washes white as snow. It's taking the ashes of all the mess that we've done and it washes us clean. I said, oh, God, and I began to get excited thinking about the blood. Amen. But the blood had to be shed. But I thank God because some people see the blood. Amen. John the Baptist in John chapter 1 verse 29, he saw Jesus coming to him and he said, behold. He said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Amen. That's the answer. Amen. You know who that is. That lamb was Jesus Christ. That's why we preach the cross. That's why we talk about the cross. Everything that we preach has to be laced with the cross experience. Amen. And I don't care, amen, whether we argue, amen, because the theologians will argue, they'll come and sit in front of your church and say, he didn't even die on a Friday. I don't care whether he died on a Thursday, a Friday, a Saturday. I don't care if it was Nisan, the Hebrew month, the 14th or the 15th, because they're going back and forth. I, I could care less about that. I don't care whether he rose on a Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. I don't care which week they choose, amen to talk about it. All I care about is the fact that he did it. And that he did it for me. 
And if he did it for me, you ought to know that he did it for you. None of those things matter to me. I'm just glad he did. Find somebody you can look at and say, I'm glad he did it. Find somebody else look at him and say, I'm glad he did it. Amen. And when you want to go a step further, just say, he did it for me. Amen. Make it personal. Tell him he did it for me. Uh, but here's the thing for me. I'm not just excited about the act of what happened. But rather, I'm more excited about the power that caused the action. Because it took another level of power that's inexplainable. Amen. For this event to even happen. Amen. Uh, this indescribable power that the world had never seen. Yes, Jesus did many miracles. He did many things. Amen. But the power was never seen like this. Amen. That, and the Bible tells us that when Jesus died, according to Matthew chapter 27, four miracles happened at his death. One was darkness. Amen. In the middle of the day, he caused it to be dark. The second was the splitting of the, 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 the curtain in the temple. The third was an earthquake. And the fourth one that people don't like to talk about is that when he died, amen, people begin to rise from the grave. There's a power that's revealing himself in the death of Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you, amen, when things happen, amen, some people think it's over. When things happen, amen, we begin to lose all expectations. My son died. My daughter died. My husband died. My wife died. We lose all types of expectations. That's normal because that's what happens to humans. And when Jesus died, it was no different. The disciples thought it was over. His mother and his family thought it was over. Those around him thought it was over. His enemies even thought it was over. And everybody had no more expectations. Out of all the teaching and the talk that Jesus did, they still didn't know what was going to happen next. Oh, but inside the tomb, inside, inside of the tomb, uh, uh, you, you know, nobody was privy to see what happened inside of the tomb. But I can imagine a few years ago, we went inside of the tomb. And inside the tomb, you can imagine that while the stone was shut over the doorway, something had to happen. And then life began to come back in the body of Jesus Christ who went down to Golgotha, amen, and died and went down in the grave to deal with devil, the devil in hell, amen. And he uh, caused victory to be snatched from the grave. Things happen inside of you. I know some of y'all don't believe it. Hey Amen. One day you're going to have to answer to it. But Jesus, he rose again. In, inside the tomb. Inside the tomb. The resurrection began to happen. And so Peter said in the text, he said, according to his great mercy. You're here right now because of the mercy of God. According to his great mercy. He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And this is when I begin to get a little excited because, see, Peter, Peter, he wrote this to offer encouragement. And sometimes we don't tap into encouraging words. See, when people begin to tell me as I'm going through something that, th that things are going to be all right, I learn to listen. Because I may not feel that things are going to be all right. But maybe somebody has a knowledge of something that I don't know. So when somebody tells you everything is going to be all right, you have to look beyond your current circumstance. That's some of y'all going through some hell right now. And I got to tell you as I stand here, everything is going to be all right. Matter of fact, you need to find somebody to encourage right now and tell them everything. No matter what you're going through, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. I don't care how it looks. I don't care what they're saying. It's going to be all right. You got to go home and tell yourself, amen, as you anoint yourself and anoint your children and anoint your doorway. That's why we do those things. Amen. Anoint everything. Say, you know what? It's going to be all right. To 
So Peter wrote these words, and he wrote them based on the confidence. And as I stand right here, six foot five, black and big, I'm here to tell you, as I believe it, everything has got to be all right. And this hope is not only for our future and eternity, but you know it begins right here. You don't have to wait till you get to heaven for everything to be all right. Things can be all right right here. But here is the thing, just like people aren't expecting and weren't expecting Jesus to come out that grave. And they thought it was over. Just like they thought Jesus was finished, there are people who think you're, fi you're finished. They see your confusion. They see your confusion and they're confused because they thought you wasn't going to make it out of what you're going through. They thought, amen, you were just as dead and gone. They thought all these things took you out of here. But you know what? They're like, wait a minute, there's a rude awakening happening. How is this happening in your life? How is it happening to you? You were way back there. How did you get way ahead of me? There are rude awakenings happening every day of individuals that can testify and say that God has been good to you. That's why you don't have to give up. You don't have to wait till the battle is over. See, they thought that confusion was going to take you out. They thought that crisis was going to take you out. They thought that the chaos was going to take you out. But God says something different. I'm going to have rude awakenings happening everywhere. Rude awakenings happening in your house. Rude awakenings happening in your job. Oh. That's right. I'm, al I'm almost done. See, some of the problem is you haven't been introducing your problems to the right people. You've been going on Facebook and social media telling everybody all your business. But what you got to do is you got to tell the confusion in your life to meet the God that you know. You got to tell the crisis in your life to meet the God that you know. You got to tell the chaos in your life to meet the God that you know. And they are not three different gods. They are one God because there's one Lord. There's one faith. And there's one baptism. So, so hear me, I'm done. Hear me, I'm done. I'm going to let you get to your, to your eggs, Benedict, or whatever you got going on today. But before you leave here today, somebody ought to say, it was a rude awakening when Jesus laid his hand on me. It, it, it was a rude awakening when he saved my soul. It was a rude awakening when he reached down in the gutter and pill, pulled me out. That's what it was. Just as I stand here right now, I'm a believer that the blood that was shed for you and I on Calvary, I'm a believer that that blood still works today. I can't explain it all. I don't have the answer. I'm not a doctor. That's not my profession. But I know that the blood still works. And let me tell you something. As you tell people about this God, people are going to be surprised as they see individuals that, they've been, that you've been witnessing to, as you see them come out from that dark place, as you see them come out of depression, as you see them come out of anxiety, they're going to say, what? They, they actually made it? And whether they dance with you or not, whether they celebrate you or not, all you have to do is think about how good God has been to you. You don't need no music. You don't need no church. You don't need no pastor to cause you to dance when you think of God's goodness and his mercy towards you. It ought to cause something to happen in you so we can look at individuals that thought it was over and say, surprise, I'm here. Surprise, I made it. Surprise, you thought that jail sentence was going to hold me down? Amen. You came out and you came out better than you were before. You thought what happened in that divorce was going to mess you up. You came out better than you were before. 
You thought that minor situation of being broke was going to hold you down. But you came out better than you did before. And so this is why I can say that these rude awakenings are happening. They've already happened. That's why I tried to get y'all to testify today. So that somebody can tap in and see, you know what, God has been good to you. When you hear a testimony, when you hear somebody, amen, talk about the goodness of God, you can say, you know what, God has been good to you. And as I look at your faces, I can see right now, amen, as I know some of the testimonies in this place, God has been just that good to you. And this is why we have to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is why we preach the cross of Jesus Christ. Him crucified, died, amen, buried, and rose again just for you. And it ain't over because the coming of the Lord is going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to be rude awakenings for those that miss this great, grand opportunity. So while we're here, my prayer is for you to make your calling and your election sure. And be bold about it once you receive God. I don't care what anybody else is saying. Be bold about how good God is. And be bold in saying that God is real. So I want everybody to stand in this place today. I want everybody to stand in this place today. I'm here to tell you that you are a living miracle. You are a miracle. If you look back at your history of your life and the things you've gone through that nobody knows and the things that people know, you let me tell you, you are a living miracle. Matter of fact, you might as well say it. I am a miracle. I am a miracle. Find somebody, look them in the eye and say, you are a miracle. And I'm glad you're here. And so we're challenged. We're challenged in this day and in this time. Because, and let me tell you, the, the, the message of the cross, it happens on Easter, on Resurrection Sunday, and we get excited. But sometimes we get so removed from the act of what happened and get more into the, direct, the, 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 direct, the directions and the decorations, rather, excuse me, of what we're trying to do. Easter, want to make everything look good. I ain't mad at that. I think that's a beautiful thing. Going to brunch today, everything is good. We should do that. Don't forget that Jesus died for you. Don't forget that he died for you. Don't forget. I started stuttering. I started thinking of that pancake I had this morning. your fault, Leonard. They work good, though. This is what it's all about. And I'm here to tell you, as before I pray for you, before we offer an invitation for somebody to give their life to Christ, I want to tell you that this walk right now is, I believe, one of the most crucial times in history. It's not about how many times you go to church even though I would admonish you to go to church, a place where you hear the word of God. It's not about how many ministries, auxiliaries you work on. It's not about how much you tithe and all of that. Those are the things, not the things that matter. These are things we should do, but it's not about those things. It's about what's in here. It's about you making your calling and election sure. It's not about you trying to be over-spiritual. There's a lot of people, we all know a lot of people that's over-spiritual. You may say, how can you be over spiritual? Come talk to me later. I'll tell you exactly. But it's about you making the necessary change in your life so that you can go through crisis. You can go through chaotic situations. And you can still maintain a godly character to help you. You can still believe in the word of God. 
because the, there are Christ-centered solutions for every issue that each and every one of us are dealing with. It is a fact. As I stand here, a wretched man, it was nothing but the blood of Jesus that allowed me to be able to stand here today and share to you, to you and with you this great gospel of Jesus Christ. And don't nobody be ashamed of all the dirt that you've done in your life. Don't be so ashamed that you won't allow yourself to tap into this blood that washes away all of your sins, every last one. Don't be ashamed. That's why I always try to keep it real with you so you can know you ain't alone. You ain't alone. You did some things. You ain't alone. People in pulpits have done things. People leading ministries have done things. We've all done things. There is nobody that's going to get out of here that's going to be, that's going to be exempt from the blood saying that they don't need it. We all need it. So I share this with you today, and I believe it's something that we must teach, teach everybody, teach our children in a way they can understand, teach everyone in a way that they can understand, because Jesus is real. And with that being said, I want to offer an invitation to somebody that does not know Jesus Christ. Maybe you not, have not made a decision to be baptized, but baptism is for you. It's for everybody. Some may say, that's not for me. It's for everybody. We love to tell you about baptism and how you can, amen, walk in this newness of life, giving your life to Christ, being baptized in his name, and then receiving the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. It is for you. It's for everybody. It is for you. It's for you. Well, maybe you're an individual and some things in your life are causing you to not be as alive as you can be. Maybe you're looking for better. Maybe there's some challenges in your life, and you know you are in an uphill battle. You may say, Pastor, I just want you to pray for me. I want you to just raise your hand. If it's you, if it's you, just raise your hand. We look around this room. As many of us, as many of us, that's right, I got two hands up. It's me. So I want to pray for you right now. I want you to bow your heads. I want you to consider Jesus Christ and what he's done for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless you for this day and for this time in which we can hear about how your resurrection gives us new life. My prayer today, Father, is that you will forgive us of anything we've done that's not like you. Forgive us for being the walking dead, showing up to church, still dead. Have potential, but still dead. Hearing the gospel and not responding, still being dead. Father, forgive us of this act. But I ask today, Father, that you will grant us mercy and grace to walk in the newness of life that you have provided for us. Father, we thank you right now for those that repent right now. I thank you for the backslider that's going to return to you right now. I thank you, Father, for those that may be in a state of confusion and chaos in their mind right now that's not even here. Father, I pray that you will draw them to you. There are individuals who have heard your word and rebelled and returned, amen, back to the world. But I'm asking God that you will begin right now to untangle their minds, untangle the confusion and the chaos in their mind, Father, and let them see that you are real. If you were once real to them, you're always real. And Father, my prayer right now, God, is that you bless everyone in this place, all of us, that as we go from this day forward, celebrating your resurrection will not be a ritual but it'll be a thing that's celebrated every day, every morning when we wake up from our sleep, Father. We'll be able to say, thank you, God, for another day. Every time we're able to put on fresh clothes, amen, and go somewhere, we'll say, thank you, God, for a new day. Every time we may be able to go to work or do whatever it is we do every day, amen, if we're retired or whatever, we'll say, thank you, God, for a new day. And, Father, my prayer is that you will allow rude awakenings to happen. We'll see them in our family. We'll see them on our job of individuals that people gave up on, God. But they tapped into you, and now they are alive, born again in you. Father, we thank you for these things, and we give your name praise and glory. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, in Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. Give the Lord praise in here if you can. You may be seated. You may be seated in this place. It is my prayer that each of you go today. And if you have been dead in your life, you have not been responding with the life that you have, I pray that God will allow you to wake up and snap out of that and be who you have been designed, purposed, and called to be in Jesus Christ. I hope something was said today to help somebody in here, somebody that's watching online. Do me a favor. If something was said to help you, amen, or help somebody, or can help somebody you know, amen, invite them to this service. You can just use your phone, amen, hit the copy button and share it on your YouTube or your Facebook or repost it, however you want to do it so that somebody can hear the word of God because Jesus is the best thing that has ever happened to any of us. Can I get a witness in here of anybody online, anybody in the building that can say Jesus is the best thing? Amen. And so we give God praise for his goodness. Amen. Let's get ready to move forward. It's our offering time here at Greater Emmanuel Temple. Our time to give Amen. To the work of this ministry, let me tell you something, saints. The Lord is good to us. The Lord is blessing this ministry to be a blessing and to operate with excellence. And I'm so grateful to God for his goodness. Amen. And as it is our giving time, our time of bringing tithing, amen, and bringing offering to the work of this house, amen, I thank God for his goodness. My prayer is that everyone in this place find something in your heart, amen, to give, knowing it's not about how much you give, amen, but it's about the heart in which you give. So you can see on the screen the opportunities and the ways to give, or if you want to give physically in the house, there is an envelope on the back of your seat, and as we leave church today, the deacons will be here to receive them at all of the exits, and there's even a kiosk in the back, on the back left side of the church, if you want to do that, whatever, amen, however you want to be a giver today, Amen. It's not about what you uh, give, but how you give. Amen. And I believe in teaching that so that you have an understanding. You walk away knowing, amen, that you gave God what you can. You gave the work of the ministry what you can. I'm excited about what's in the seed. I'm excited, excited because God gives seed to the sower. Amen. And how many here love to give? Who, anybody here that love to give? Amen. Just make some noise if you love to give. And even you online today, amen, I'm inviting you and challenging you to be a giver here to this ministry as God blesses Greater Emmanuel Temple to do ministry in excellence. And we're so honored to be uh, a church that is good stewards over what God provides us with here at this church to be a blessing not only to those within this church, but even in this community. So as you're preparing to give today, I want you to remember Remember all of the announcements. Remember, amen, what's happening after church today, the Easter egg hunt for all the kids immediately in the courtyard. And I want everybody to go out there and take pictures in the courtyard. Amen. Hashtag whatever you want to hashtag. Just put G-E-T. Amen. Keep it for yourself so you and your family can see. You can send it to your family across country to let them know you was at Resurrection Sunday at G-E-T today and that you had a good time. Amen. As we get ready to give today, I want everybody to hold up well, however they're giving today, however you're giving today, hold it up, hold it up, hold up your, give your tithing, or if you've given throughout the week and you've done what you can, hold it up, or if you don't have to give today, just raise your hand if you have a desire to give. I want everybody to participate in this as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the seed that we have sown today. We know it's not a debt we owe, Father, but we're giving because we love to give to the work of the ministry. And we say thank you, amen, for blessing our households. Thank you, God, for providing us with clothes on our back, roof over our head, food on our table, Father, in the name of Jesus. And for those that don't have to give today but they have a desire to give, Father, bless them that they'll be able to take care of their own house, God. Provide and make ways as you look at their heart in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we love you for your goodness and your mercy. And we say we love you and we honor you for blessing our homes. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Somebody say amen.
Amen. As you give today, amen, God bless you all. My prayer is that you have an amazing, amazing Sunday. Enjoy your family. Amen. Pick up the phone. Call your family that's out of town, that's back east, or send them a text if you don't want to talk to them. Just say, hey, I love you, and you can't do nothing about it. Remember, love God, love people, love yourself, and I'll see you all next Sunday. Hey friends, this is our week. This is the week of the Champions Club happening this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. We're developing winning through the word. So join us this Wednesday at 7 p.m. The Man Cave is doing a meetup. That's Saturday, April the 23rd. Please contact Brother Larry Avila today for details and for him to sign you up. That's on Saturday, April the 23rd from 10 a.m. 12 p.m. in Chino Hills. Hey, get fam. Did you know that you can access your Christian education class online according to your age group? That's right. Just scan the QR code on the screen and save the link. Hey, GET young adults. Hike and brunch is back. Saturday, April 30th at 6.45 a.m. We are going to meet at Santiago Oaks Regional Park. So get your boots ready, bring your water. It's going to be a great time. And while you're at it, make sure you follow us on Instagram at GET Young Adult. And if you are in middle school or high school, we have a lot of fun stuff planned for you this summer, including Six Flags. So make sure you scan your QR code and follow us on Instagram at GET Youth for more information. All right, we'll see you guys soon. The Season Saints had a fantastic time at Tom's Farm. On May 21st, the Season Saints will be traveling to San Juan Capistrano. They will be taking a relaxing train ride along the beautiful coast. There will be unique shops, restaurants, tea houses, and more. Also, you'll be able to visit the historical San Juan Capistrano Mission. So don't forget to mark your calendars for May 21st. Did you miss last week's service or would like to stay up to date with all of our pastor sermons? You can now on our posted social links through our new website. Go check it out at my-get.org. Not only can you catch up on services you've missed, but you can also have insight on all of our upcoming events and access all of our church's resources. If you have not yet, go visit the site today. We appreciate you joining us for church today. If you haven't yet, make sure you follow us on Instagram and like our Facebook page to stay up to date with all of our new and upcoming events. Now we hope to see you back with us next Sunday. Have the most amazing week. Hallelujah. And with all that being said, Jesus brought the sunshine. He will make your day. He will brighten up your way. If you're excited about that, come on and stand on your feet if you can. Yeah.